Breaking news across the wire. Tuesday morning of International Fight Week, you have the fact that Treshawn Gore is out of his bout against Bo Nickel. And Gore seemingly having a really, really bad injury. Yeah. So everybody wishing him the best to a speedy recovery. But then we look at the fact that we have a short notice replacement and coming in on under a week's notice, it is the animal Val Woodburn. And when you consider a fight like this, obviously it's really tough to find an opponent for a guy like Bo exactly. Nickel, no matter the notice. I mean, that contract goes across the table. Nobody wants to sign it. But if you look at Bo Nickel, he became a pro mixed martial artist last year. He's already 4-0, 1-0 in the UFC. You can see that on the graphic right there. But, I mean, overall, Bo Nickel was a minus 1,800 favorite Pretty against wild. a six-fight UFC vet in Jamie Pickett his last time out. And how did that fight go? Well, he clinched up. He landed a Ooh. knee to the cup. Jamie's in pain. And then all of a sudden, Bo Nickel's going for a Darce choke, snapping the neck down. He's getting the position, gets it down to the mat, holds an arm triangle. Kind of has to figure it out for a little bit, but he gets the choke all the way. And if you look at Nickel so far... He beat a CFFC middleweight champ on the last episode of Contender Series last summer. He beat Zach Borrego, who was kind of an up-and-coming prospect, 3-0 as a pro. And then in his pro debut, old Noland in there, mouthing, let's go. And then he eats a left hand and a couple of hooks, and he's out for, for the night. So if you look at it for Nickel, I mean, we know the lineage in wrestling. Exactly. A Penn State alum, it looks like he still trains there for his mixed martial arts career as well. He's a three-time national champ in D1 and a 2019 Dan Hodge Trophy winner as... The best wrestler in the entire country. So you look at that for Bo Nickel. You know the accolades. You know the fighter. But Val Woodburn taking this fight on short notice. The Jamaican, American, fighting out of Florida, out of Fusion XL. And you look at some of the teammates. You look at Val's Instagram. And you see he's trained with Chris Curtis exactly. recently. You see that he trains with Phil Rope who's cornered him in the past out of Fusion XL. Adolfo Vieira's out of that gym. Matt Scroy, one of the coaches there, and I've talked about him on this channel before. Matt Scroy, one year, and it was in 2007, 2008, played for the Johnstown Chiefs, you know, the Chiefs, and in 27 games had 192 penalty minutes. It's pretty impressive. That's insane. So he is one of the striking <laughs> coaches at Fusion XL. But when I look at Val Woodburn fight, and these fights are very, very readily available on YouTube. You can go through and watch his entire career. The question that I have after watching the fights is, what is his style? It's really aggressive. I think that's fair to say. He's somebody who will push forward quite aggressively in a lot of his matchups and search for those bigger power shots. And to his credit, that is a big part of his game. When he is able to land some of the rights overhand, he does close the distance quite well and he does have good follow-up strikes. But the big issue that I do have in this matchup is if he's starting a strike moving forward, like why can't Bo Nickel just keep on shooting underneath? I just counted 15 seconds. For 15 seconds in every fight... Val Woodburn goes out there and strikes, and then he stops striking, and he clinches up with every single opponent for two to three minutes, and they reverse position, and they figure out their pummel, and then Val Woodburn will go for his takedown, and if he doesn't get it, he strikes once more, and he'll do it for a burst of 20 to 25 seconds in the second iteration, and then he clinches again. My issue is, I doubt he's going to clinch with Bo Nickel, and if he does... That's like what, pulling guard on Brian Ortega? Like it's not the greatest way to go out there and get a win. And for Nickel, you mentioned it. Like he has shown the progression of his game. I was someone who initially, I was kind of worried we were going to get more of a Jake Shields style out of him, right? You know how talented the wrestling is? He's got that in his back pocket. Why can't he keep on going to the well? But I do think he has shown an ability to go out there and not only get submissions, but go for ground and pound, use his hands too. But those really are the question marks moving forward. How well can his game continue to grow? Because when you have that one X factor like a Bo Nickel has, you don't really want him to become like a, uh, uh, Johnny Hendricks, for instance, a guy who fell in love with his hands and kind of got away from what brought him to the and dance. But for Nickel, those are things that he will have to continue to improve upon if he does want to end up fighting the, the Robert Whitakers of the division, the Drinkus Duplass. These guys who are up near the top of the card. And we've seen Nickel strike, and we've seen him kick, we've seen him punch, we've seen a little bit of that boxing, but it's really been all action, and he hasn't really had to withstand any punishment. So how does that play out in a three-round fight? Because all of these fights have ended within the first round. And when you look at Val Woodburn, I mean, you can see Consider the level of opponent that he's been taking on in his last five fights. It hasn't really been the greatest. And even the last two guys that he's faced who had records. I mean, Wesley Martins was exactly. 17 and 8. But at the same time, he was, uh, what, 
Eight of his 25 opponents that he faced had not applicable to records. To be fair, though, when a guy's 5-0, and oh, those are the types of people he should be fighting. He shouldn't yeah, be fighting yeah. guys that were 22-5. His, his and opponent, five. Wesley Martins, was on a four-fight win streak over 0-0, 0-2, 0-3, and 4-3 and fighters to get up to his 17-8 and eight record. The other man that he had faced in his last time out, Mr. Luis Melo, was a 41-year-old Brazilian jobber with no wins since 2015 and a 1-5 record in his last six fights. So... Woodburn hasn't faced the greatest level of competition. Those last two guys that he faced were very advanced in their careers. It was a lot of the clinching, the wrestling, but not really getting the takedown. You ever getting watch boxing? Reversed out of position. I, I do, again, Woodburn's undefeated. I, and if you go and watch the fights that he had before those last two, yes, there's clinch work. I mean, when he had fought Amos, who was nicknamed Black Santa... And that one, he ate a big jab, he ate some big shots, he withstood it, and then he was able to land his big power. And if you look at it for Woodburn... Overhand right, left hook. And that's it for the strikes. A couple of leg kicks. He doesn't throw kicks to the body. He doesn't throw kicks to the head. Now, he's one of those guys. He's almost 30 years old. So, again, he is still growing in his martial arts career. And you can see some progressions in his fights. But it's a lot of 15 seconds in, we're done striking. If I don't get the knockout, then I'm going to go in for some of the clinch work. He's got really good uppercuts, too. But... It's just not the most complete game coming into this. No, I agree with everything you said. I just, who else do you want Woodburn to fight when he's 5-0? and Like, those are the types of matchups that you are going to have when you have single-digit fights on your record. Like, it's in boxing, they'll have 30 fights like that before they fight anybody who's any good. So for Woodburn, I do understand what you're saying. They are at the highest levels of competition, but the guys who are experienced, so I still think that they're decent wins to have on your record moving forward. They're people who, again, they aren't the O and O themselves. I just think this is such a tough matchup for Woodburn. Because, again, with Bo Nickel, he was the guy getting ready for the fight this weekend. He was all stalled speed ahead, I guess. And for Nickel, this to me really comes down to what improvements are we going to see out of him, if any? Or is he just going to go to the wrestling basically immediately in the matchup? It's going to be a tough one for old Val Woodburn. If you do look at it, Bo Nickel now... A 20 to 1 favorite or more, 25 to 1 favorite in the insane. matchup. You have a look at the topology votes, no surprise, and we won't leave it as a surprise. 91% of the fans going with Bo Nickel. We threw it out there to you over on our Instagram as well, at Fight Night Picks for this one. I do have Bo Nickel in the matchup. I think the wrestling experience and forget about the striking is going to play out in great dividends. Yeah. If you go back and watch the fight that Nickel had against Zach Borrego, he runs across the cage and initiates the grappling, and Nickel's one of those guys that we've seen. A little bit of resistance in some of the takedowns, especially the Jamie Pickett exactly. one. Didn't get it initially. Landed that cup check. No nonsense. Some no nonsense. Keith Peterson let it go. And now we're here. So I do have Bo Nickel in the matchup. But for Woodburn, overhand right, left hook. The grappling, it's there, uh, but we'll see how that plays out. This and think about Nickel, I do like the submission ability to go along with his wrestling in his game. He's not someone who, again, is just going to get on top and kind of lay around and not really know what to do in some of those it, positions. And think about Nickel, too, is we haven't seen it as much yet, but on some of his big takedowns, not that there's these massive opportunities to scramble, but guys aren't really having a lot of activity off their backs. We're not seeing a lot of broken posture. We're not seeing a lot of scrambles off the back. So I do like Bo Nickel, especially because of that top pressure in the wrestling. Let us know in the matchup who you have. Did you find the tape that was out there on youtube and make sure you check out the rest of the videos in the series ufc 290 coming up this weekend as a programming note you know it there's no question mark kicks and to be completely honest this video is pretty by chance and you're lucky because after tomorrow i'm gone so yeah make sure you check out the rest of them volkanovsky taking on rodriguez in the main event for the featherweight title co-main event the trilogy matchup brandon moreno taking on alessandre pantoja keep it locked in with fight night picks we always say let's, let's get, get into it, it.